my name's Alan Bateman and I'd like to introduce you to this hobby of stick dressing. Uh, we'll start with the simple sticks of course and move progressively on to the more difficult ones. But the good thing about this hobby is you do not need to spend a lot of money on tools or equipment. The average vice, screwdriver, chisels, the sort of thing you'll find around any garage are the sort of things we're going to use. First of all, let's look at the raw materials and join a friend of mine. Okay. Well, I haven't been here before, have I? Well, I've changed to go somewhere different. Yeah, yeah. I've cut um, sticks in this area, but not on this particular in this particular woods. Yeah. And I must admit, they've always been jolly good. Well, I have my own sort of places that I go each year. Yeah, but uh, it's always nice to go somewhere different. You never know, you know, what you're going to find. Well, that's very true, and I think each year, you know, you just need to be able to move around from place to place, otherwise you just you just cut them out too fast. That's right. Yeah. Now, obviously, one of the first questions. Well, Alan, you've just shown me this, and I think probably a lot of people have seen s twisted sticks that look rather like sort of barley sugar, uh, which are always really rather attractive. Uh, but just tell me what happens. This is obviously this is obviously what you're showing me is the start of it. Yeah. The, here's the vine. It's grown around from the bottom here, and it's gradually taking a strangle hold upon the stick. Mm. At this stage, I don't think it's really um, gone into the wood sufficiently to to get enough twist in it. Probably another year or two, and it will grow in a bit more. But you see, you use the word vine, but that in fact is honeysuckle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, the same effect can actually be got by some people put wire around the sticks. Yeah. You know, only problem is when it grows very nicely, someone else comes and cuts it before. <laughs> <laughs> the old saying yeah. goes, "Cut it, cut it when you see it. Yeah. And don't wait about." That's right. But that's one in an early stage that certainly will be a very nice yeah. stick in a year or two's time. It's going to be quite heavy, that though, isn't it? It could be. It's yeah. hard to say. But when this when this vine bites in, sometimes it does reduce the growth yeah. um, of the stick. So it, it'll be a nice one to keep an eye on for the future. It's an example, anyhow. Great, okay. This is a pretty good example of the sort of stick that I'm always looking for. It has a taper on it, meaning it's quite thick here and tapers off towards the top. Mm -hmm. But most importantly of all, it's got some most beautiful colours in it. Now, because of that, I would cut a stick that possibly isn't normally um, cut because it's a bit bent, but it's worth it's worth the trouble to straighten it afterwards. So let's cut it, shall I? So can shall I or after you? Be my guest. Now the stick I've chosen to make is a thumbstick, although the principle of making a thumbstick will be exactly the same as a walker. The first thing to do is to remove the pith from the middle here, and you can see quite clearly where the pith is. You get quite a strong white line round the side where the solid bone is. So let's put it in the vise and do that. Whilst drilling, if you make a circular movement with the drill, this brings out the pith around to the diameter at the end, leaving a clean hole, and also makes a conical shaped hole so that the peg on the end can be actually graduated, and this makes a good joint. Right, now we've drilled the hole, it's time to find a suitable shank for good having a very light stick and a heavy head or the other way around. The next thing to do then is to get a peg carved on the end of the stick that will fit this hole. And to do that, the first thing to do is measure it. So if you just stick any object, the knife will do here, and measure the hole like so. Then run it down the shank and start to cut just above the mark. Right, now we've got to a stage where the peg fits the horn here. And a good tip is to make sure there's a pencil line on the horn and on the stick so that each time you replace the horn, you go back to exactly the same place. Another important aspect of the stick, of course, is the actual joint here. And to do that, if you hold it up to the light, you can see if there are any gaps around there. If there are, of course, you need to adjust the surfaces so that it sits down really well. Again, it's important to make sure that this glue goes right around that joint at the bottom. And here our pencil mark comes in useful once again 
is we can put it straight onto the position we want and then put some pressure on it like so and again we've got a nice little edge of blue underneath showing us that there's nowhere around the joint that's starved of glue. What I've said I was going to do is rub it around here with this and then we'll come on to the polishing. A stick head is now finished and all that really remains now is to finish the stick part itself uh, with a coat of varnish or oil, which, or whichever you prefer and finally of course to put a rubber or steel tip on it but that, that feels a very nice stick too